Hello everyone, welcome back to Artificial and Facts. I hope you all are doing well and today's video is gonna be about Indonesian aviation industry. But before we discuss it, don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, share this video, and subscribe this channel to get no more interesting information. First thing first, what is aviation? Generally, aviation is the science of flight. In Indonesia, there is a law that concerning aviation, which is Undang-Undang Nomor 1 Tahun 2009. It is stated that aviation is a unified system consisting of the use of airspace, aircraft, airports, air transportation, flight navigation, safety and security, the environment, as well as supporting facilities and other public facilities. So talking about the aviation industry, it is the party that encompasses almost all aspects of air travel and the activities that help to facilitate it. In Indonesia, there are two state-owned enterprises or BUMN that play an important role in improving the quality of airport operation through the implementation of technical operational coordination of airport services and aviation navigation services. The first are PT Angkasa Pura I and PT Angkasa Pura II. Those are part of a state-owned enterprise or BUMN which is responsible for managing traffic and business activities in airport areas that spread throughout Indonesia. And the second important company is Perum Lembaga Penyelenggara Pelayanan Navigasi Penerbangan Indonesia or known as AirNav Indonesia is their business name which provides flight navigation services in accordance with applicable standards to achieve flight efficiency and effectiveness in national and international scope. And now we're gonna talk about the regulation. So, there are two kinds of regulation in Indonesian aviation industry, which are Indonesia government regulation and the general regulation. Government regulation is the rules that came from several levels of governments in Indonesia. It is consist of aviation law or unonong penerbangan, government regulation or peraturan pemerintah, ministerial regulation or peraturan menteri, ministerial decree or keputusan menteri, directorate general decree or keputusan direktorat general, and the last one is directorate general regulation or peraturan direktorat general. So the second regulation is general regulation. It is for the internal operation in aviation, especially in airspace, aircraft, air transportation, security and safety, and flight navigation that consists of safety rules, internal guidelines, user guidelines, circular letter, airworthiness directive, standard manual, and exception letter. So those are the regulations that must be implemented in the aviation industry in Indonesia. After we well talking about the general definition and aspect of Indonesian aviation industry, now we will discuss about the development of aviation industry and its impact on Indonesian economics. It has been recognized internationally that aviation is one of the drivers of economic growth and development. Aviation as a mode of transportation plays a very important role in the economy of a nation. If the flight operates optimally, the economy will also be healthier and developed. 
based on Indonesia's geographical condition that in the form of an archipelago, the air transportation sectors thus play a very vital role due to the characteristic of fast air transportation because it can fly many times a day to various places and reach various areas but still prioritizes safety, security, and comfort factors. With air transportation, the movement of people as well as goods and services can increasingly reach all corners of the country quickly considering that currently many airports have been built in the outermost, innermost, and remote areas throughout Indonesia by the government. The aviation industry in Indonesia had experienced ups and downs in its business journey. History records that in the past, dozens of national airlines had operated in Indonesia along with the high mobility and needs of passengers on planes. The aviation industry has provided leverage for the advancement of various industries. During half a century of aviation business journey in Indonesia, many airlines have grown to reach approximately 95 companies that have ever been present. But due to the intense business competition, one by one closed their operation. The trend of growth and development of the aviation industry occurred in the 2015 to 2019 period. The aviation industry continues to experience fairly consistent growth. The number of licensed domestic routes on average increased by 12% per year during this period. In addition, international flight networks and routes continue to grow with an average increase of 10%. The number of cities connected on domestic roads is also increasing by an average of 7% per year. This indicates that national aviation support for tourism development and development as well as national economic growth is very large and influential. Then earlier in 2020, COVID-19 pandemic happened in Indonesia. The current challenge in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic is how to resume construction of transportation infrastructure to improve connectivity. Another challenge is how the transportation and tourism sectors are able to revive even though they are in the difficult position of choice either they should continue to prioritize health protocols so that health of society is maintained but the other hand the country economy must also continue to run until 2019 the number of cities in indonesia connected to domestic roads reached 145 cities meanwhile foreign air transportation routes are 23 cities in indonesia to 66 cities in foreign countries based on data from the Indonesian National Air Carriers Association or INACA in 2019 there were 53 airlines still operating consisting of 16 scheduled and 37 unscheduled airlines however until the end of 2020 the number of domestic air passenger only reached 35 million 393,966 people or a turn of 55 percent likewise international passenger only reached 2 million 45,851 people or a turn of 95 percent compared to 2019 Based on this data, it is very clear that the COVID-19 pandemic has greatly affected the decline in flight statistics due to the lockdown and PSBB, which limiting people's mobility, especially domestic and foreign flight activities. 
we also can see the impact on one big airline company in Indonesia. In 2021, PT Garuda Indonesia TBK experienced a net loss of 18.94 trillion rupiah in the financial reporting period ending on September 30, 2021. This loss increased by 25% from the same period in the previous year, which was recorded at 15.19 trillion rupiah. After suffering the COVID-19 pandemic, aviation industry has grown quite rapidly in recent times. This is indicated by several new airlines entering Indonesia. For example, Super Airjet and Pelita Air, which recently entered the country's market for a scheduled commercial flight. This is a sign that the new future prospect of scheduled airlines are quite good. Then in the end of 2021, based on data from the peak season, for Christmas 2021 and New Year 2022, there was an increase in transportation users because at the time, the government began to reduce the PPKM level which opened up community mobility. Another prospect came from INECA which looks at the 2022 outlook from the public vaccination rate. When vaccinations are implemented properly, herd immunity can be formed more quickly so that people's mobility and the use of air transportation can recover quickly. 50 airports has monitored during the 2022 Eid holiday period and the highest number of passengers occurred at Soekarno-Hatta, Denpasar, Makassar, and Balikpapan Airport with the total number of aircraft movement around 58,000 flights. When compared to the same period in 2019, provisional data for total domestic and international air transportation on the peak day of the homecoming flow in 2022 with a total of 207,700 passenger still experienced a decrease of 30.2% compared to 2019 which amounted to 297,501 passenger. But this is still good news for the economy where growth and development have started again after a fall due to the COVID-19 pandemic happened in Indonesia. This year's homecoming momentum has become the point of revival of the aviation industry and the Indonesian economy. Despite the reduced fleet of aircraft operating during this year's homecoming, they are still able to optimize their movement so that the surge in passenger that occurs can still be served properly. Furthermore, when viewed from the side of the tourism sector itself, the government is also intensively developing the tourism sector. With the opening of several airports and optimization of several other airports, this opens up new market share and routes for airlines to access. Therefore, this opportunity allows the aviation industry in Indonesia to be wise in determining the appropriate ticket price increase due to the increase in after fuel prices. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching.